And don't look now, but all of a sudden, the New York Jets are riding a three-game winning streak. And this game was significant for the New York Jets for a lot of different reasons. The first reason this was important was they beat a good team. This is a team that's competing to be in the playoffs with a good quarterback. This was a great test for the New York Jets because all I was hearing over the last two weeks was, yeah, the Jets have won two games, but it was against terrible teams. It's not a great benchmark, but the Jets beat a playoff contending team, and they did it convincingly, and they did it at home. It was a huge win for this organization that has now won three in a row, and it's very significant for three key pieces of this organization, Christopher Johnson, Adam Gase, and Sam Darnold. And I'll get to Johnson, and I'll get to Gase a little bit later, but I want to start with Sam Darnold. A couple weeks ago, I defended Sam Darnold. I defended him after the New England game. I defended him after the Jacksonville game, when people were crushing him. I heard everything from that he's a buzz to, oh, they should just tank for Tua now. You do realize since he's come back from Mono, he's now 4-3, and three, and he's now won three games in a row. One of the biggest things they always look for in a great quarterback is leadership and taking accountability, and Sam Darnold has done that. There was a great story how after the Jacksonville game, he went and talked to Adam Gase, and they had a meeting about what the offense needed to evolve into. And since that meeting, Darnold has thrown eight touchdowns, run in for an additional two touchdowns, and only thrown two interceptions. And I'll get to that on Gase in a little bit, but for Darnold, he has made adaptations to this offense. And more importantly, and I said this after the Jacksonville game, he looks healthy. I mean, we talk about him being over mono, but those first few weeks back, doctors will tell you that mono, the the effects of it will linger. He didn't look right. Now he looks healthy because one of the biggest things Darnold brought to his game was his ability to move, his ability to get outside the pocket, his ability to use his legs. And in the New England game, in the Jacksonville game, he looked a bit sluggish. And I still think the mono was having an effect on him. And I think over the last couple of weeks, we've seen him look healthier and healthier. And you've seen a big difference. He's been extending plays with his legs. He's been running for first downs. And the biggest thing is he's been efficient. He was efficient again yesterday, moving the ball, taking shots downfield. And this offensive line has gone through a lot of changes. It's gone through Shell was playing left tackle yesterday. Aduga got hurt during the game. I mean, this was an offensive line that had a lot of questions before, and now they're scraping the bottom of the barrel to get some pieces. But despite not having a great offensive line, despite having problems with his receiving core and his inconsistent running game, Darnold has helped this team win three games in a row. They've won three in a row. He's been four and three in his last seven starts. And the biggest thing for me is he's put them in a position to have an interesting second half. Now, that comment a couple weeks ago about making the playoffs – I like the confidence. I think it was ill-advised. Look, they play the Bengals next, which I know is a big trap game, and even Jet fans are worried about because the Jets have already lost to the Dolphins. But, I mean, the Jets should win that game. If they don't win that game, well, there's going to be a lot to talk about. But I'm looking at the schedule, and before the season started, I picked the Jets to finish 7-9, and 8-8. and eight, If everything went right, 9-7, and seven, and that's – Pretty much where it looks like they're going to finish up if things continue to go this way. And that's good news for Sam Darnold. But it's even better news for Adam Gase. I've been saying this, I can't tell you how many times this year, but Gase's measuring stick wasn't going to be by the wins and losses. It was going to be by the development of Sam Darnold, and that's looking good right now. The thing with Gase that I've been on about is I don't love his play calling. I didn't like how he didn't really adapt, but I have to give credit where credit is due. This team has scored 30 points in three consecutive games, the first time that's happened in decades. Darnold has looked incredibly well, but the biggest thing that I'll give Gaze credit for, and do I still think I like him in the long term for this team? No. Do I still think he's a great head coach? No. But I will give him this bit of credit, which is the following. He has made changes. He adapted and he's worked with Sam Darnold to help refine this offense. 
because one of the things that I've been on Adam Gase for has been his stubbornness and his lack of change. Because this team, we saw it even in the losing streak. First play, first 15 plays of the game, they went right down the field. The offense looks great on the script. But when it came to making the adjustments in the game, this team really struggled. And I do think for this offense, he has made the changes around Sam Darnold. He could have easily said, what do you know? I'm an offensive head coach. This is my system. This is what we're going to do. We are going to stick with it. But instead, he acquiesced. He worked with Darnold. They've changed some things. And we're starting to see some more innovation in this offense. So I have to give Gaze credit where credit is due. And the biggest thing I really admired about this team is how they haven't quit. It would be really easy to quit, especially after a 1-7 and seven start. And you could easily quit on a head coach. And you could tell from the players that they still, at this point, believe in Gase. They're still fighting hard for him. They could have easily, if they didn't like Gase, they could have easily packed the season in. They could have easily packed it in, but they've won three in a row. They're playing hard which is something you really like to see. And I have to give Gaze credit for that as well, as he's kept this team together. He's kept them fighting in a situation that wasn't very good. And look, I get Jamal Adams' comment yesterday. He wasn't happy that the Jets were booting their old building by the Raiders, but that's the way the NFL works. This team was out of the playoffs. They were 1-7. and seven. Season ticket holders didn't want to spend money to see this mess. And look, they were a mess. At least now, the last couple weeks, if I'm a Jet fan and a season ticket holder, at least I can say this. Look, they're probably not going to the playoffs, but at least they're giving me interesting football and they're giving me something I want to watch. Because there was a couple weeks this season where this team was unwatchable. Now at least they have an offense you can watch. Now at least they have a quarterback. And for people saying that Darnold wasn't the right choice, that Darnold was a bust, look, Darnold's played incredibly well the last couple weeks. And if he continues to play like this throughout the end of the season, he comes into year three healthy with a rebuild offensive line, the Jets are going to look like a different team. Now I still think there are questions about Le'Veon Bell. There's still questions on this offense, but... If Darnold continues to play like this and finishes the season strong, you have to feel confident that they got the guy. I still felt they had the guy even when he wasn't playing well. But I will say this about Gase. His saving grace had to be Sam Darnold, and to his credit, Darnold has looked very good. Now, they had to finish the season on a strong note. But it also looks good for Christopher Johnson because Christopher Johnson, don't forget, also backed Adam Gase when this team was 1-7, and seven, said he was going to be the head coach, and you could just feel the Jets fan base seething with anger that they wanted Adam Gase gone. And to their credit, the Jets have won those games. They've continued to work, and I know what people are going to say, well, these are meaningless games. They're out of the postseason. But they're really not meaningless games. They're meaningless in the sense that they're not going anywhere in 2019. But this is a young football team with a young quarterback. If they're able to develop over these next couple weeks and put themselves in a position to take the next step forward next season, that's a big season for this team. This was a team, too, that if everything went right, I think they were a 9-7 and team. You were hoping they could be in playoff contention if everything broke right. But let's be honest, with all the injuries, with all the guys on IR this year, and with the brutal schedule in the front half of the season, this was going to be incredibly tough, and I give the Jets credit. They're still fighting. They're still playing hard, and that was the biggest win of the season because it's one thing to beat really bad teams, and I know people were lumping the Jets into some of the really bad teams in this league, but I kept saying, look, they at least have a quarterback. They at least have some good pieces on this team, and we're seeing it against the Redskins. We're seeing it against some of these other teams. Did they show it against the Dolphins? No, but... You have to give the Dolphins credit. The Dolphins have played very hard, and people's, I think, perspective of the Dolphins has changed in recent weeks, saying, man, they're trying to tank, but but they're playing hard for Brian Flores. Now, once again, there's a lot of things moving pieces with this New York Jets team. They still have a lot of work to do. They have a lot to do this next season to rebuild the offensive line, but they're already off to a good start with the picks they got from the New York Giants because Leonard Williams, once again, was invisible on their stat sheet for a consecutive week. So that trade by Joe Douglas is looking better by the day. But the biggest things I took away from this week, the team's still playing hard. 
Adam Gase has not lost this team. Christopher Johnson, for the moment, now this is always subject to change, looks good for backing his head coach, but once again, the most important thing is Sam Darnold looked very good. He did not turn the football over yesterday. He played exceptionally well. He used his legs. He took shots down the field. They moved the football at will yesterday, and I get it. They've played some bad defenses, but you have to take advantages of the opportunities you've been given, and the biggest problem for Sam Darnold was he was turning the football over. In the last three games, only two interceptions and 10 touchdowns combined through the air and on the ground. But once again, the biggest takeaways, this offense is looking better. Sam Darwin looks like he's the franchise quarterback. The defense is showing signs of life. Jamal Adams is just, he's a one-man wrecking crew all over the football field. And there's a lot of things you have to like about this team. This was an ugly first half of the season for the New York Jets. But if you're a Jet fan, you have to like the progress you're seeing right now. And the rest of this 2019 season is all about that. Making progress towards 2020. And so far, the Jets are taking the steps in the right direction.